Hey, what's going on? It's Nick here from Ways of Wealth. Thank you for tuning in. It is week 39 of the market recap. For all of you that are returning, I appreciate your support. As always, for those of you that are brand new, we highlight key events that happened in the market over the past week. So if you learn something new, if you get some value out of this video, help me out by smashing that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on. We do this every single week. With the US dollar appreciating, starting to come off of its lows, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to talk about the Big Mac Index. And if you don't know what that is, stay tuned for more. Warning, the side effects of this video may include hungriness, temptations to break your diet, nausea, heartburn, and worst of all, dia Today we are talking Big Mac economics, and I want to apologize in advance for any unwanted cravings that this video brings to you. Do all beef, patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. It was first introduced by Pam Woodall in the September 1986 edition of The Economist. And the theory behind it, the thought process, was that the Big Mac was so universal in so many different countries that they could use that as a gauge for the purchasing power parity. The purchasing power parity is a measurement and it calculates the absolute purchasing power of a currency. So like Homer mentioned before, all of the Big Mac ingredients, those are consistent throughout the world. So if you could factor in the final cost of the Big Mac, you can kind of figure out what the cost of the other goods are, whether it's the bread or the lettuce, and it gives you an indication of how far your money would go if you were to convert to that currency. Now what makes this even more interesting is that the Big Mac index is used to determine if a currency is overvalued or undervalued in comparison to another. This is because the purchasing power parity signals where the exchange rate should be heading into the future. There is an underlying notion that over time exchange rates should move toward the rate that makes the cost of the Big Mac the same price. What we'll do is we'll look at an example. We'll take a look at what a Big Mac costs in the US and we'll look at what a Big Mac costs in the UK and we'll see if a currency is undervalued or overvalued. So this data that we're looking at is from not too long ago. It's June, only a couple months ago of this year. And we can see that the Big Mac in the US is $5.71 and uh, 339 pounds in the UK. Although the web provides the data already, if you're interested in looking at the calculation of the GBP to determine if it is undervalued and overvalued, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide 339 into 571. So this implies, based on the two prices, that the exchange rate should be 0.59. But in reality, when we search online for the real numbers for June, we see the actual exchange was 0.79. So you subtract 0.79 by 0.59 and divide it by 0.79. Hopefully I haven't lost you yet to see that the Big Mac is undervalued by 25% in the UK, meaning that your money would go further if you were to convert your USD into GBP. Now, not only are you getting more bang for your buck if you're converting your US and you're going to the UK and buying a Big Mac, but what economists expect is that over time, the two prices will be in unison if you factor in the exchange rate. So what that means is they would look and say that the GBP is undervalued as well. So they would expect that currency to appreciate, to grow in comparison to the USD. There is definitely limitations to the Big Mac index. Not like everybody in the world can get access to McDonald's, places in Africa don't have it, India, it's not as uh, prevalent as a fast food chain. But definitely take a look at The Economist, the Big Mac index, and look for yourself to see 
what currencies are overvalued and undervalued based on purchasing power and let me know down below what country you'd love to travel to to eat a Big Mac. And that's all for the market recap. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your support. If you made it this far, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. I'll throw my Instagram up on the screen. Make sure to stay tuned for some clips that I throw throughout the week. I hope you all have a great week on the markets. Happy trading.